Hi, this is Dr. Ram from Edmanus. I'm going to teach you about trochlear nerve palsy, cranial nerve 4. What is the action of superior oblique muscle? You have to understand this very clearly. There are three actions on the eyeball. Depression and abduction. Depression, moving the eyeball down. Abduction, which means moving the eyeball away from your nose. So, your superior oblique muscle moving your eyeball in this direction okay what is in torsion suppose if this is your nose rotating the eyeball towards your nose is in torsion so what are the three actions of a superior oblique depression and abduction and in torsion in order to make this point very clear i will show you a model let us understand the action of superior oblique muscle with this model so i have shown the normal alignment of an eye Consider this as a right eyeball so that you have your nose here and this is your superior oblique muscle and here you will be having your inferior oblique muscle. So what is the action of superior oblique? If this muscle contracts, it intorts the eyeball and if inferior oblique contracts, it extorts the eyeball. Very clear. Now you have to understand how this superior oblique muscle does the depression and abduction movements. In order to understand this, you have to see the insertion of a superior oblique muscle. So it is not inserted in this way because if the muscle inserted in this direction, it does only the intorsion movement. But it is this angle to which it is inserted it produces the depression and abduction movements. So if it, this is your eyeball, this is your nose, it depresses as well as abducts, as well as in tots. So this is the exact action of superior oblique. So once again, so it in tots as well as depresses and abducts. So down and out action. In fourth cranial nerve palsy, the patient's superior oblique is paralyzed. Patient complains of double vision while reading or looking down because the depression movements are affected here. Suppose we consider the right superior oblique muscle is affected. Look at the eyeball. The pupil of a right eyeball is slightly at higher position than your left. Why? Because the eyeball is turned upwards. This is because the unopposed inferior oblique muscle that pushes the eyeball up and also it extorts the eyeball that is it rotates your eyeball away from your nose now you have to understand the patient tilt their head in order to avoid the double vision let me explain that now what happens to your eyeball when you tilt your head note that this is the normal axis of eyeball that is very important because if this axis is altered, you may get double vision. But when you tilt your head, you can still see the object clearly. How is it possible? Okay, for example, you tilt your head to your left side and the axis of eye is altered, but you have torsional movements of eyeball. The right eye undergoes extorsion and the left eye undergoes intorsion. So that the normal axis of eyeball is maintained and you will be able to see the object clearly without double vision. This is performed by superior oblique muscle. This is performed by inferior oblique muscle. Okay, now what happens in fourth cranial nerve palsy? This patient right superior oblique muscle is affected. We are going to perform the head tilt test for this patient. Okay, so the right superior oblique is affected, so the eyeball undergoes extorsion. So I have shown the arrow in this way, and this eyeball is normal, and the patient is having diplopia because the normal axis of eyeball is changed. Okay, now when the patient tilt the head to the normal side, that is left side for this patient, the axis of the affected eyeball becomes normal and in the left eye if you see this muscle undergoes intorsion. 
so that both the axis of the eyeball is returned. The patient see the object without diplopia. This is the very important point that when the patient tilt the head to the normal side, they can see the object without diplopia. On the other way, if the patient tilt the head to the right side, that is the affected side, the patient will be having diplopia and that will be exaggerated. I hope this session is very clear for you. So what is the take home point here? In fourth cranial palsy, superior oblique muscle is affected. Patient will come with double vision while reading or looking down. If you tilt the patient head to the unaffected side or say the normal side, the unaffected eye can undergo intorsion because the superior oblique is intact here and there is no diplopia. If you tilt the patient to the affected side, the affected eye cannot undergo intorsion and the diplopia will be exaggerated. Thank you. See you with more interesting videos.